All right, I am back with another video, and today we are going to be doing a bit of a personal build of mine. Uh, I am a massive fan of the Yakuza series, or Like a Dragon if you prefer. Uh, basically, a series of kind of action brawler games which have recently turned into RPGs. That are just known for having amazing characterization, really, really fun stories, and just being over the top goofy as hell, while still having very serious subject matter. Genuinely one of my favorite game series of all time, um, and today we're going to be making a build based off of the titular main character, at least for most of the series, Kiryu Kazuma, who is known for being a kind of street fighter brawler type, who has multiple different kind of meth, like combat styles, and the Yakuza series itself has a few different mechanics that I've tried to translate into BG3. Overall, I think I've succeeded, but it wasn't just me alone, I kind of was umming and ahhing about exactly how I wanted to build this, and a member of uh, the Discord, uh, Lava, was very, very kind in helping me kind of figure out the exact mechanics that I wanted to grab, and helped kind of collect my thoughts, so I really, really appreciate them for helping me out. If you want to help out with builds in the future, please join the Discord or make your own build requests. This is also, and I'm sorry, this is a bit of selfless, um, selfish, selfless, whatever, uh, self-promotion here. This is a this video is a kind of supplementary material to a video I released on Saturday, which also had a Yakuza theme, but it was me trying to beat uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 using only unarmed strikes and throwing weapons. I gave the video a whole Yakuza theme with like the music, and I even did some like edits here that made it look like the boss transitions from the series and such like that. Now. If you didn't see this video, I don't blame you because I made it so you couldn't. Uh, the way the YouTube algorithm works is that if you upload something that you wouldn't normally upload and your subscribers don't watch it because it's not what they want to see, YouTube won't push it anymore. But, and I understand that most of you just come here for chill, you know, in the background type videos where I just discuss builds, but I would really appreciate you giving this one a look if you know, you like my content. It's my first time doing scripted content in a very, very long time, a few years, and I put a lot of effort into it, like playing the game took forever, as well as editing and recording it. The whole thing took about a month, so if you want to go see kind of more of this sort of style of build, because it is still a build video in a weird way at the end of the day, so if you kind of wanted to go and see that, please do. Again, I put a lot of effort into it, but with that out of the way, let's get into the build. So there are a few things about the Yakuza style of combat that I really, really wanted to capture. Number one, the three styles. In Yakuza 0 and, Ki and Kiwami, which was like the remake of the first game that was originally on the PS2, Kiryu had a few styles that he could switch between. Fighter, uh, not fighter, brawler, rush, uh, beast, and eventually legend or dragon mode. Now, unfortunately, it's a bit hard to, c to translate all of these into Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, rush is about quick rushdowns, as the name implies, dealing very quick, lighter attacks and being able to dodge quite effectively. The second style, Brawler, is just your all-around combat style, basic kind of street fighting which has a good mix of offense and defense. And Beast is all about grappling foes, uh, throwing them around into each other, as well as being able to use objects in your environment to be able to uh, attack your foes as well. So things like bicycles, traffic cones, uh, various signs. Like if you've played the Yakuza games, you'll know what I'm talking about. For those, but for those of you that happen haven't, it's basically like throwing on environmental objects in this game, which is how I've decided to translate it. And the final uh, the final style was kind of like a dragon style, which again is kind of just this uber powerful style. Uh, that kind of just has some unique special moves, because in the Yakuza series, uh, they have this thing called heat, and it's not like the heat mechanic in this game, basically it's this meter that you fill up, and then when it's full enough you can do certain special attacks. And I wanted to try and capture this all in BG3, and I think I've kind of got it, obviously two very, very different systems for two different gameplay styles, it's harder to translate than you would think, but I think I've got interesting ways to kind of get that flavoring while still building a powerful build. There is going to be a lot of stat weirdness with this one, and the way we kind of have to boost things up through various weird ways is going to seem a bit strange, and there are further optimizations you could make if you don't care about certain roleplay aspects and you want to use boost your certain stats a certain way. It's entirely up to you. 
But without further ado, let's get into the build, as I meant to do five minutes ago, but then continued rambling. So we're going to be kicking things off as a Barbarian. Barbarian is going to get us a few things right off the bat. It's going to give us a big health pool right at the start, about 14 HP. We're also going to be getting access to a bunch of stuff like we weapon and armor proficiencies. We're not going to be using uh, weapons or armor. We are going to be using clothing with this build, but those options are still there if you choose to go with them. The main thing we want from this is, again, that big kind of base hit pool, as well as Rage. Rage is going to allow us to do two extra damage with melee and improvised weapons, as well as throwing. And we also gain resistance to physical damage and advantage on strength checks and saves, as well as unarmored defense using our constitution. Basically, what this allows us to do now is that we immediately gain access to uh, the ability to use things in our environment to attack. So picking up rocks, goblins, whatever you want to use kind of around you to deal damage, you can. So we're immediately getting that style of thing. So this is basically we've unlocked the beast style first. And again, we won't be getting our unarmed strikes right away from this because obviously we plan to use unarmed strikes. But of course, you attain level two in this game extremely quickly, basically right after stepping out of the tutorial area. So that's not going to be a huge deal right off the bat. And since we're going to have such high base strength anyway, your unarmed strikes will do a bit of damage even without monk levels enough to get through the tutorial. So that's fine. As for our ability scores, this is probably the strangest stat spread I've ever had in this in this game, but hear me out. Strength is at 17 because we want this to be as high as possible, and yes, we are going to be using Tavern Brawler to bump this up later. We're making a strength-based unarmed fighter. We're obviously going to be going with Tavern Brawler as that is going to help our throwing damage as well. We also have Dexterity and Constitution both at 14. I would like both of these higher, but the waiver stat spreads kind of work to get the most power and versatility out of this build. Unfortunately, we kind of have to have these be slightly, slightly middling. Now, of course, after using Tavern Brawler, you could use um, the Potion of Everlasting Vigor to bump your strength up to 20 and put points into other stats and such like that. But that's entirely up to you if you want to go down that route. Like I said, I'm not using Ethel Spoon or the Potion of Everlasting Vigor on this build by default because I don't believe this character would do that. However, if you feel like you want to kind of optimize this build even further, you could do exactly that, but I'll get more into that later. So Dexterity and Constitution are at 14. 14 dex is fine uh, if you want to go for um, medium armor, which you absolutely could with this build if you so desire, but just be aware that some monk stuff, because yes, we're obviously taking monk levels, uh, isn't going to work with armor, so I'm trying to keep it clothing only, and besides, we're kind of wearing clothing, so it makes sense. Uh, for the record, this is camp clothing, not armor, and yes, it's modded, but I'll get to that later. Constitution is at 14. Again, I would like this higher, but with our barbarian levels, this is still going to give us a pretty decent pool of HP to start with. Uh, you will have ways of bumping this up later if you so desire, but for now it's staying at 14. Intelligence is at 8, we don't need it. Charisma is at 8, we don't need it. As much as I would love to have a little bit of charisma on this build because I'd love to be able to sing some karaoke, we unfortunately can't. However, Wisdom is going to be at 13, making it a 12 and putting our plus 1 there. This is going to seem really strange, but we are going to want a decent Wisdom stat, especially being a monk, and we will have a way to bump this up to a 14 later without needing any sort of things like Ethel Spoon or the like. So, that is the stats. Yes, they're not quite optimal. If you wanted to work, if you don't care so much about your wisdom, you can fumble this around a bit more. Obviously, if you use something like the Gloves of Dexterity, you could go for something like that. It's entirely up to you. Or even in the end game, if you wanted to grab the Amulet of Greater Constitution and do things that way, you can. But I'll just show you that this build can still be really strong, even with this kind of sub-optimal stat spread. But of course, if you want to adjust equipment as you see fit, you absolutely can. As for our skill proficiencies, I went with the Soldier background. So, Kiryu was a Yakuza, but he wasn't necessarily a criminal who would go for things like lying and like stealthy stuff, which an actual criminal background would do. He was more of a foot soldier, intimidating people and using his raw strength to be able to get things done, beat down, shake downs, all that sort of thing before he, you know, turned good. So athletics and intimidation makes perfect sense, even with our slightly lower charisma. We also gain insight because, oh yeah, you can also choose, because we're a human, you can pick any sort of um, skill proficiency. I've gone for insight here, because Kiryu is very good at telling when people are lying, and then, well, most of the time, unless you're playing the subquests, <laughs> and he kind of is a bit gullible. But again, you can kind of put this into whatever you prefer, and I've gone for perception and survival for our barbarian proficiencies. Next up, at level 2, we are going to be immediately going out of Barbarian. We only need the one level of Barbarian for this build, we just want that basic bit of rage for the resistances and the extra damage to melee attacks and throwing. Overall, it does help a little bit. Next 
but now we're going to be going straight into our main class, and of course that is going to be Monk. Monk is going to give us a bunch of things, unarmored defense using our wisdom, although our constitution will most likely be higher. Dexterous attacks allowing us to use our dexterity instead of our strength for, for melee attack for our unarmed strikes, but we are still going to be using strength. But our now now we get our unarmed damage bumped up to a d4 instead of just our strength modifier, so that's pretty nice. As well as being able to use an unarmed strike as a bonus action after making an unarmed strike with our main attack. So we kind of get extra attack at level 2 in a weird way, since we're not using our bonus action for anything other than raging at the moment. So after turn 1, you've got some pretty decent attacks. We're also going to get Flurry of Blows. This is going to be our rush style, allowing us to do quick attacks in succession. And then being able to dodge with our, you know, monkish agility or something like that. So we've unlocked rush style now. Again, we're probably only going to get really get two distinct styles of fighting, the beast style and the rush style, and we're going to be combining them both kind of anyway, so it's not like we're going to be like using those styles exclusively. We basically are just going to be doing an all-in-one type thing, a bit like the later Yakuza games, but I wanted to kind of point out the distinction that we are getting these things because it was my inspiration anyway. Next up at Monk level 2, we are going to be getting a few things. Improved unarmored movement, increasing our speed, as well as patient defense, step of the wind dash, and disengage. Uh, the only one I really care about here is patient defense, and making it so attack rolls against us have advantage, so we can basically go into a defensive stance and get ready to launch a tiger drop when an enemy comes close, which is basically like a very famous counterattack from the Yakuza series. If you know, you know. Next up at Monk level 3, we are going to get to choose our subclass, and again, while it can be debated as to whether or not Yakuza characters actually have any form of special or magical abilities, especially in the later games, we are going to be going for a pretty simple street fighter kind of character, so we're going to be going with Way of the Open Hand. We're not really into getting elemental magic or stealthy stuff, and this is just the most powerful option. This is going to give us some of our heat actions, those special moves I mentioned earlier. And speaking of heat, I've just noticed that I've perfectly positioned the torch behind our character's head to make it look like it's on fire. Very interesting. Anyway, so we're going to get a few unique uh, kind of special attacks here, that being the ability to use our flurry of blows to knock people prone, being able to stagger them, meaning that they can't take reactions, that's what I thought, as well as being able to push them away from us, allowing us to safely disengage from combat, even though we will have a better way of doing that later. So we've got a few special moves here, each of which are quite powerful. Next up at Monk Level 4, we are going to be picking up our first feat, and that of course is going to be Tavern Brawler, as I said, rounding out our strength to an 18. Now, if you did want to use the uh, Ethel's Boon Potion of Everlasting Vigor Potion of Everlasting Vigor combo, I could actually see you leaving um, your strength at 17, using Ethel's Boon to bump this, bump your strength up to an 18. And then using uh, the Potion of Everlasting Vigor to get yourself to a 20, you could absolutely do that if you wanted to optimize this a bit further. And then set your constitution to 15 at character creation and bump that up to 16 here. That would probably be the more optimal way of do doing it if you are okay with using those stat boosts, but otherwise this is still fine. Tavern Brawler, as I mentioned before, is going to allow us to add our strength modifier twice to the damage and attack rules of unarmed strikes, throwing and improvised weapons. Everything we want in a single feat, which is perfect. Next up, at Monk level 5, we're going to be grabbing extra attack. Now we can make two attacks with our action, as well as an extra attack as a bonus action, whether that's Flurry of Blows or our regular attack. Perfect, we're just going to be an even more effective fighter now. We, I'm going to call this the Brawler style, just being able to attack regularly twice. Because how else am I going to justify it? Anyways, we're also going to be able to pick up Stunning Strike. Since we're not using weapons, we're only going to be using uh, the unarmed variant here. Allowing us to do our unarmed damage and potentially stun a target. Meaning they can't take bonus actions, actions or reactions. This could be another great heat action for us. And even though I've kind of been back and forth as to whether or not I think this is powerful or not. Because of the chance to hit. I do think it is pretty powerful. So it's quite welcome here. And at Monk level 6, we are going to gain access to most of the really powerful open hand monk features. We're going to get a boost to, our, boost to our movement speed, we're also going to get key and power strikes allowing our fists to overcome our resistance and immunity to non-magical damage. We're also going to get manifestation of body, mind and soul allowing us to add extra damage equal to a certain base amount plus our wisdom modifier which is why I wanted to get this a little bit higher. So we're going to get extra damage on all of our attacks. I would probably go for the radiant version just because that feels the most in theme for some reason but any of these will work depending on what you're fighting. And finally wholeness of body allowing 
you to regain half of your key points as you enter a temporary state of wholeness where you regain key points and have an extra bonus action. Which means this is now go us going to be entering extreme heat mode. In the later games, that being Kiwami 2 and Yakuza 6, uh, there was they kind of exchanged style switching for this mode called extreme heat where you basically get to spend all of your heat meter to be in a temporary state of beating the crap out of people and have way more power and this is how we're going to get that here so an extra bonus action for even more flurry of blows as well as being able to regain a bit of hp and key points so overall perfect for this build and perfectly in theme now from here on out you have a choice in how you want to do things i'm going to be showing off our final multi-class now but we might come back to monk later depending on what you want to do so let's get into it now that we have everything that we want from Monk, at least for now, we're going to be jumping up over into Rogue, because again, we have a criminal background being part of a criminal organization, so it makes sense that we've got a bit of roguishness about us. This is going to give a sneak attack, but we obviously won't be using that as it doesn't work with our unarmed strikes, but we are going to be able to pick up two, an extra proficiency and two expertise. Uh, that proficiency can kind of be whatever you like. It's not really going to matter. Kiri Kiryu is great at karaoke, though, so I would definitely recommend picking up performance. We're also going to get to expertise, and I quite like, it, like picking up athletics expertise, because if you are throwing enemies, it is an athletics check, so you do want to have this be quite high, so you have a higher chance of succeeding when throwing enemies. As well as being able to pick up intimidation proficiency, because, again, that just feels right. Next up at Rogue level 2, we are going to be able to now, we're going to get up our cunning actions, allowing us to hide, dash, and disengage as a bonus action. Dashing and disengaging going to be going to be great for getting us to move it around the maneuver. Oh, I can't speak today, my apologies. These cunning actions are going to be great for maneuverability and being able to get in and out of dangerous situations. So being able to dash in or out, as well as disengage as well. And at Rogue level 3, we are going to be, of course, picking the Thief subclass to get that second bonus action. It synergizes so well with Monk that it's hard to ignore. Again, even further bolstering our rush style of attacks, allowing us to make a lot of attacks per turn. Like, a lot. Now this is where you have a choice like I mentioned before. You could even go you could either go to level five of rogue or level four four or five of rogue to get that extra feat here, as well as being able to get things like evasion from level five of rogue. You could go to level two of barbarian if you want or even level three if you want to pick up a um a subclass, perhaps Wild Heart, because Wild Heart could give you a bunch of customization options there, like they being able to resist all damage, making us even tankier, or get things like Eagle Heart to be able to rush through our enemies, stuff like that. It's entirely, well, not Eagle Heart, uh, Elk Heart. Eagle Heart could also work if you want to jump on people, but I don't know why you'd want to do that with this build. So there's an option there, or you can keep going with Monk, still picking up that extra feat, but also getting more key points and the like. This is what I'm personally going to be going with, but those other options are there available to you if you so choose. So, with level 7 of Monk, we are going to be getting an additional key point as well as, well, evasion, allowing us to deal, basically get the same thing as level 5 of Rogue, so now I'm not entirely sure why I mentioned it, but regardless, it is there. Evasion will allow us to uh, basically get half damage on a successful deck save and on a failed deck save against a spell or action that would require a deck save and then if we succeed we only take we don't take any damage so it just makes us overall a bit more tanky against spells we also get stillness of mind meaning we cannot be charmed or frightened that is pretty huge and i feel like it makes a lot of sense for a character like this who is basically got protagonist powers when it comes to stuff like that and finally at monk level 8 we're going to be getting another key point to fuel all of our monk features as well as a new feat now this feat can kind of is definitely going to go into an ability score improvement but you kind of have to choose what is more valuable to you uh i wouldn't recommend pumping up our strength any higher 18 is very very powerful as it is and we do have ways to get it to level uh to 20 either through equipment or through things like the Potion of Everlasting Vigor or even the Mirror of Loss. So overall, you shouldn't need to bump this up. You're going to want to put your points into either Dexterity or Constitution. Dexterity will be good if you want to have higher initiative rolls and AC as well, uh, basically allowing you to be a bit faster. However, I think 14 is fine enough. We don't need high initiative, especially if we're part of a team where we're going to be getting some backup anyway. I feel that Constitution is a lot more valuable, giving us a higher HP pool, and it still bumps up our AC thanks to, thanks to Barbarian's 
unarmored defense using our constitution overall and i think i think that's just going to be better for us in the long run again our idea of fighting is getting right into the thick of it and taking down multiple people at once so we absolutely want to have a high enough hit pool to be able to you know tank those hits i know wisdom is still sat there at 13 but don't worry we're patching that up in a minute And that is the build. Overall, what you're going to be getting out of this is a ton of power. And I mean it. We're going to have a ton of damage on all of our attacks, thanks to Tavern Brawler and the uh, kind of unique stat buffs from, um, from Monk and well, Barbarian as well, allowing us to stack Rage on our kind of unarmed attacks as well, making us resistant, so we're going to be very tanky as well, and we're just going to be getting a ton of features, as you can see here. I'm just kind of reorganizing my hotbar so it's a bit more organized, because I hate it when it's all messy. Let's see if we can do this very quickly so I'm not completely holding up the video. There we... Let's get rid of you. We don't need you. Let's get rid of you, 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 and you. There we go. So, with that all together, we now have access to all of our abilities, like I said. So, we're going to be very powerful. As you can see, a basic unarmed strength deals 1d6 plus 10 damage. With rage, we're going to be getting a little bit more. Uh, it's mainly from our improvised weapons and throwing. Unfortunately, I don't believe rage affects unarmed strikes directly, but again, we still want that extra damage and our extra resistances, so rage is definitely going to help us out there. But at base, we're going to be getting 1d6 plus 10, which is great. We're also going to have access to flurry of blows, stagger, uh, topple and push, as I said, which as you can each, which you can see, each of them do quite a bit of damage, and that's without our passive, which if I go over here and show you now. You can see all of a sudden our attacks now do a lot more damage uh up to 44 with flurry of blows which is quite nice and that's not even showing like things like wholeness of body which now gives us 24 healing patient defense allowing us to impose disadvantage on attack rolls against us stunning strike allowing us to stun you have a lot of ways of controlling the battlefield with your various special attacks and defensive options overall I really, really like this build. Again, the stats are a little bit unoptimized, and again, you're not really going to be the face of the party with that low charisma, but you're absolutely going to be able to jump into fights and do great. Again, you can optimize this build further if you take those extra buffs, but again, for roleplay purposes, which I do take into consideration with these builds, I don't think this character would do that, but it's entirely up to you. Now, let's get into the equipment, because there is a lot to talk about here. Obviously, no weapons. I didn't showcase it here, but you could absolutely slap the Darkfire Shortbow on this build if you wanted to. This would give you fire and ice resistance, as well as the ability to cast haste once per long rest, basically giving you a super extreme heat mode but of course you wouldn't be able to rage while that's going on uh so it's up to you if you wanted to include that on this build it would obviously give you even more powerful but i chose to ignore it for the sake of not having any weapons because that's what this build is about now let's get into the rest of it First up, we have our headpiece, the Scabby Pugilist cir Circlet. This was a suggestion from Lava. Your weapon and unarmed attacks deal two, an additional two damage while surrounded by two or more foes. If you're jumping straight into large groups of hooligans and other minions, then this will be perfect for you, just giving all of your attacks an extra bit of damage. It's not the most optimal thing in the world. Again, if you're in one-on-one -on -one fights or against bosses, it's not really going to really make a difference. So you can feel free to sort this out with anything you like that you feel like would be more appropriate, but I felt like this was the most on-theme thing we could grab. But of course, this is an Act 3 option, surprisingly. So I have the Haste Helm here, something you could pick up immediately in Act 1, and it's going to give you a momentum at the start of combat, allowing you to close in and start dealing their damage without too much problems, without needing to dash, as you probably won't have your rogue levels that early in the game. So, that's a decent option until you get that. Cloak of Protection giving us a plus 1 to our armor class and saving throws. Again, our AC is not ideal with this setup, so we need all the help we can get. Now, as for the chest piece, you have a few options. It depends on what stat you want to focus on. If you don't, if you want your strength maxed out and you want an extra little special attack, you can go for the Mighty Cloth. This is going to give you Bull's Strength that increases your strength score by 2 to a maximum of 20. And Bull's Strength gives you advantage on strength checks, and our carrying capacity would be doubled. Now, the advantage on strength checks isn't too much of a boon because we get that through rage anyway. So the main thing we're here for is that plus two to our strength, maxing it out, as well as giving us Bull's Rush, which as you can see here, does a d4 of damage plus five, so our strength modifier, 
and it allows us to charge forward and possibly knock our foes back three meters. It says it's only available while raging, but that's not true. This is that's just a copy and paste description from a Wild Heart Barbarian feature. They need to kind of fix that. But it, this also can knock our enemies prone, giving us another attack, and we can use it per turn. So it's not like we have a short rest restriction on that. It's quite a cool and thematic option in my personal opinion, but I don't think it is the best. Again, if you really wanted to optimize your strength, just get the Potion of Everlasting Vigor. Do the things I suggested in the video. So that comes down to two options. We have the Graceful Cloth, which would allow you to bump up our dexterity to our 16, giving us a bit more AC. As you can see, we've gone from a 16 to a 17, as well as giving you a bit more of an initiative bonus, as well as Cat's Grace, giving you advantage on dexterity checks, as well as being able to increase your jump distance and give us an extra small bonus to dex checks. This is if you want to basically say, fuck you, fireball, I don't want to get hit by you, and mix this with our monk evasion to make it so we're much more tanky against spells and have a better initiative roll to be able to go first. Definitely a viable option, especially in the early game. But I, the main option I think I would go with here is the Enraging Heart Garb, giving us a plus two to our constitution, giving us that bit more ace, uh, it's still giving us that AC bump, but also giving us a bit more HP. It does come with the Wrath ability that while raging, we generate two turns of Wrath, basically meaning we gain a plus one bonus to damage with melee weapons for each con uh, turn of the condition remaining. However, it's melee weapons and unarmed strikes don't count, so this actually means nothing to us, and I don't believe this affects improvised weapons. So we're just here for the constitution buff, but as you can see, it does give us a nice bit of HP and uh, AC. I mean, 17 isn't ideal. Uh, we can buff it up a little bit more if you wanted to get something like the Ring of Protection or the Evasive Shoes, which I'll show off in a minute. But overall, it's not going to be the end of the world. Again, thanks to Rage, we are going to be quite tanky. Uh, and we will be able to dodge things with things like patient defense as well. You're just going to have to play this build rather strategically. It's not just going to be a click buttons and win build for the most part. You are going to have to think about what you're doing. But we will have plenty of resources to help us out in that department. And then next up, our gloves option. This is this is where the build gets a bit interesting. This is the Sparkle Hands. On hit with an unarmed strike, the wearer gains two lightning charges. When imbued with lightning charges... Uh, your attacks against metal constructs and foes wearing metal armor gain advantage, which is a lot of enemies in the game, so that works for us. But lightning charges are pretty cool. Basically, lightning courses through you. You have a plus one to attack rolls and do an additional one lightning damage while you have these charges. Once you gain five, they are consumed the next time you deal damage and you deal an additional 1d8 of lightning damage and you lose one charge per turn passively. This is how I actually wanted to mechanically recreate the heat mechanic from Yakuza. Basically, the more you attack, the more your heat gauge fills up. In this case, our lightning charges, allowing to do big uh, special attacks, dealing extra damage when it's full. And because of the way Monk works and the fact that we get so many unarmed strikes per turn uh, through Furrier Blows and the like, we're never not going to have lightning charges, so we're always going to be getting that extra damage and bonus to our attack rolls, and getting to hit for those big bursts every few punches, basically probably once per turn with the amount of attacks that we get, because again, Flurry of Blows is technically two attacks, so that's two sets of lightning charges gained. You're going to be dealing a lot of damage, so overall we now have the actual heat gauge mechanic in the game, which I felt was quite fun in addition to all our heat action special moves. Finally, the Boots of Uninhibited Kashiko, allowing us to deal additional damage equal to our Wisdom Modifier. Again, that's only about a plus two. I mean, we do have a lot of damage here already, so if you feel like that's not really worth it, something like the Evasive Shoes just to bump up your AC, or even in Act 3, the Bone Spike Boots to give you that plus one to AC as well as a few other benefits can totally work, but the Evasive Shoes until you get the Boots will be just fine. I mean, again, we're only losing about two damage overall, so it's not a huge deal, and again, you could get that damage back with the scab Scabby uh, Pugilist Circle, it. Overall, it's a pick your poison type deal. Do you want more AC or that little bit of extra damage? I would say the AC is probably more valuable, so maybe grabbing something like the Bone Spike Boots in Act 3 could also work, but it's entirely up to you. Again, all the equipment and suggestions and stuff like that are in the description with the build write up. Next up, our Amulet, Khalid's Gift. While wearing Khalid's Gift, uh, Jahira cannot be cursed. This is meant to be used on Jahira. We won't be getting that extra bonus. What we will be getting is a couple of other things, though. We will be getting a plus one to our Wisdom, rounding that up to a 14, finally. Unfortunately, this will only happen in Act 3, but up until that point, it's not really going to matter too much any either way. And also, we're going to get the ability to cast Aid on ourselves once per long rest, just giving us an extra bit of hit points, 10 to be exact. 
There you go. Just a nice little bit of extra hit points. We don't need to maintain concentration on that. Just makes us a little bit more tanky and we can still use rage as well. Overall, it's just a nice way to kind of patch up the build. Obviously, if you optimize the stats a bit further, you could probably swap this out for something like the Sentian Amulet, but it's entirely up to you. Next up, the Shadow Cloaked Ring. The wearer's weapon and unarmed attacks deal an additional 1d4 damage against lightly or heavily obscured creatures. So when you're fighting a bunch of criminals in an alleyway, you'll be able to deal even more damage. Basically, anytime you're standing in shaded areas, so most of Act 3 for the most part, because so many fights take place inside or around buildings, you're going to be getting an extra 1d4 of damage. As well as the Ring of Flinging, the wearer gains a 1d4 bonus to throw damage, so whenever we're going to be using our throwing improvised weapons and such like that, we're going to be getting a bit more damage on top of it. So this build as a whole is all about being able to use strong unarmed strikes, using various different methods to control the battlefield, using various different buffs like the uh, second bonus action from Thief Rogue, topped off with wholeness of body to get three bonus actions and just deal massive amounts of burst damage, throwing things around with our attacks as well, being able to use the environment to our advantage, again throwing things like oil barrels around and then having your sorcerer set things on fire, like maybe even using grenades and such with this build could totally be a thing because in the Yakuza games you can use weapons, I'm just choosing not to because it's not really what the game focuses on. There's just so many different ways to kind of approach this build and again, despite the fact that we have like sub-optimal stats, if you use the equipment right, you're still getting 18 AC at the end of the day, which is more than enough. You still have a massive pool of HP to work with and you're still dealing a ton of damage and again, Ethel Spoon, Potion of Everlasting Vigor, you can absolutely optimize this further if you so choose. Hell, if you really wanted to, you could dump strength entirely and rely on potions of giant strength as well to really get that power going. Because you would have even more strength and then you could focus on the other stats even more. There's a ton of room to optimize, I just don't like having to rely on the Cloud Giant potions if I can help it. The final thing I'll point out here is that the outfit used in this build is from the... Uh, I believe it's called the SR Suits mod. There's a link to it in the description. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get the game's like die system to give me the white trousers with the red shirt or the jacket. Unfortunately, I just kind of had to settle for just the red shirt with um, darkish trousers. But in the light, they actually look kind of grey. So, you know, we'll take it uh, to kind of get that Kiryu look. But obviously, if you wanted to recreate this as vanilla, there's very you don't have to create Kiryu. I think this build still works really well on its own anyway. But um, yeah, I'm quite happy with how this build turned out. Despite the kind of weirdness with the stats and all that, the build still is very powerful. I mean, you've seen the combat footage. It's probably playing now, and it would have been playing at the beginning of the video. We just kind of annihilate things. I mean, that's open hand monk in a nutshell. You do just kind of win in this game. Again, if I had to rank BG uh, like BG3 subclasses based on pure power, open hand monk is top three at least. I think it is just one of the most singles powerful uh, melee focused subclasses in the game a monk really did get like a fix in this game compared to tabletop oh man but anyways uh like i said at the start of this video this video is a supplementary material to a video i made on saturday so i'd please like you to check that out if you have any interest in it at all uh, otherwise, yeah, I mean, that is everything. I don't think there's much else to say. Um, probably going to do another stream this weekend. I'm thinking it's going to be something a bit more casual. We're still organizing the kind of eight player stream and we're going to do some testing for that this weekend, but that's going to be off stream. I'm thinking this weekend we might do something a bit more casual. I want to get back into Elden Ring and stuff like that. Uh, nothing too crazy at the moment as far as that's concerned. There's nothing else really to report on as far as the channel goes. We did hit 8,500 subscribers yesterday, which was a, which is a big milestone. We're only 1,500 away now from 10k, which was kind of the main goal of this channel, to, was to try and reach that number. So I guess, again, again, I don't like doing this, but if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I mean, if you're at the end of this video, I have to assume you're subscribed, because who else would listen to all the way to the end of this? Like, seriously, these videos are way too long. I could probably, if I really tried, I could probably condense this down to like 20 minutes, but that's really not what you're here for, is it? People like to put this stuff on. Apparently, yeah, apparently the number one way to consume my content is to put it on in the background while you work on other stuff, and that's great. I'm glad my voice um is like that, I guess. I don't think I have a voice that's really good for just listening to, so I don't know. But anyways, we are at the end of the video now, so I think I will be signing off. Um, and I mean, I, we usually do this, like, comment something in the... the on the video thing to see if you actually made it to the end but i don't think i'll do that this time because i don't know comment whatever you want and i know there's going to be a smart ass that comments literally whatever you want like the, the phrase go on do it then just do it go on 
fuel the algorithm for me. <laughs> as always, I get to the end of these videos and I just start ranting and raving. But anyways, I am going to sign off now. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.